Rosselin of Compiègne c. 1050 c. 1125, better known by his Latinized name Rochelinus Compendiensis or Richelinus, was a French philosopher and theologian, often regarded as the founder of nominalism. Biography Rochelinus was born in Compiègne, France. Little is known of his life, and knowledge of his doctrines is mainly derived from Anselm and Abelard. He studied at Soissons and Reims, was afterwards attached to the Cathedral of Chartres and became canon of Compiègne. As a monk of Compiègne, he was teaching as early as 1087. He had contact with Lanfranc, Anselm and Saint Evo of Chartres. It seems most probable that Rochelinus was not strictly the first to promulgate nominalistic doctrines, but in his exposition they received more definite expression, and being applied to the dogma of the Trinity, attracted universal attention. Rochelinus maintained that it is merely a habit of speech which prevents our speaking of the three persons as three substances or three gods. If it were otherwise, and the three persons were really one substance or thing una res, we should be forced to admit that the Father and the Holy Spirit became incarnate along with the Son. Rochelinus seems to have put forward this doctrine in perfect good faith, and to have claimed for it at first the authority of Lanfranc and Anselm. In 1092–1093, however, a council convoked at Soissons by the Archbishop of Reims condemned his interpretation, and Rochelinus, who was accused of tritheism, recanted the doctrines attributed to him, but only out of fear of excommunication and even stoning to death by the Orthodox populace, for later he returned to his early theories. He fled to England, but having made himself unpopular by an attack on the doctrines of Anselm, he left the country and repaired to Rome, where he was well received and became reconciled to the Catholic Church. He then returned to France, taught at Tours and Lachmanach in France where he had Abelard as a pupil, and finally became canon of Boussançon. He is heard of as late as 1121, when he came forward to oppose Abelard's views on the Trinity. He was also sent a letter by Theobald of Atampes for having denigrated wrongfully the sons of priests. Of his writings there exists only a letter addressed to Abelard on the Trinity, in which Rochelinus belittles Abelard and makes merry over his castration. Haria brings forward his name in connection with a text, Sententia de Universalibus Secundum Magistrum R. Notices et extr. de quelque manish. Lot. v. Paris, 1892, 224, but this is a conjecture. We have as evidences of his doctrine texts of Anselm, Abelard, John of Salisbury, and an anonymous epigram. His share in the history of ideas and especially his nominalism have been exaggerated, his celebrity being far more due to his theological tritheism. <laughs> Rosalind's nominalism, or sententia vocum According to Otto of Freisingen Rosalind primus nostris temporibus sententium vocum instituit Gesta Friederici Imp. in Monum. German. Hister, script, xx, 376 literally, was the first in our times to institute the opinion, theory of words. But the chronicler of the Historia Francia, cf. Bouquet, Recul des Hist, des Gaules et de la France, 12, Paris, 1781, 3, b, c, mentions before him a Magister Johannes, whose personality is much discussed and who has not yet been definitively identified. What constitutes the sententia vocum? To judge of it we have besides the texts mentioned above which bear directly on Rosselin an exposition of the treatise De Generibus et Speciebus 13th century, wrongly attributed to Abelard by Victor Cousin. The sententia vocum was one of the anti-realist solutions of the problem of universals accepted by the early Middle Ages. Resuming Porphyry's alternative, Mox de generibus et speciebus illid quidum sieve subsistent sieve in nudis intellectibus positisint, the first medieval philosophers regarded genera and species, substance, corporeity, animality, humanity, either as things or as having no existence, and applying to this alternative a terminology of Boethius, they derived thence either res things or voces words. To the nominalists universals were voces voices, which means, one, above all that universals are not res, that is that only the individual exists, nom cum habit orum sententia nihil esse prater individuum. De Jenner, et spec. 524. Nominalism was essentially anti-realist, too, that universals are merely words, flatus voces, e.g., the word, homo. 
divisible into syllables, consonants and vowels. Fuit autum, namini magistri nostri rochalini tam insana sententia ut nullum rem partibus constare velet, sed secut solis vocibus species, ida et partes ascribat abilard, liber divisionum, ed. Cousin, 471. Ili utique dialectici, qui non nisi flatum vocis putant universalis esse substantias, et qui colorum non aliad quiunt intelligere quam corpus, nec sapientium hominis aliad quam animum, prorsis a spiritualium questionum disputation sunt exaflandi. Anselm, De Incarnation Verbi, p. 285. Opera Omnia, Vol. 1. Ed. F. S. Schmidt, 1938. Alus ergo consisted in vocibus, licit haec opinio cum Rosalino suo fear omnino evanuerit John of Salisbury, Metalog, 2, 17. The universal is reduced to an emission of sound flatus voces, in conformity with Boethius' definition, nihil enum aliad est prolatio voces, quam eris plectro linguae percussio. Rosalind's universal corresponds to what is now called the Universale in voce in opposition to universale in re and universale in intellectu. But this theory of Rosalind's had no connection with the abstract concept of genus and species. He did not touch on this question. It is certain that he did not deny the existence or possibility of these concepts, and he was therefore not a nominalist in the fashion of Taine or in the sense in which nominalism is now understood. That is why, in reference to the modern sense of the word, some call it a pseudo-nominalism. John of Salisbury, speaking of nominalist secta, Metalogue, 2, 10, gives it quite another meaning. So Rosalind's rudimentary, even childish, solution does not compromise the value of universal concepts and may be called a stage in the development of moderate realism. However, because of his position as the first medieval philosopher to challenge medieval realism, he has been invoked as a forefather of modernity. Rosalind was also taken to task by Anselm and Abelard for the less clear idea which he gave of the whole and of composite substance. According to Anselm, he maintained that color does not exist independently of the horse which serves as its support and that the wisdom of the soul is not outside of the soul which is wise. De Fide Trinit, too. He denies to the whole, such as house, man, real existence of its parts. The word alone had parts, ida divinum paginum perverted, ut eo loco quo dominus partum piscus ossi comedis partum hujus voces, quae est piscus ossi, non partum re intelligere cogator cousin, pia ballardi opera, 2, 151. Rosselin was not without his supporters, among them was his contemporary Rainbert of Lille, and what the monk Araman relates of his doctrine agrees with the statements of the master of Campaign. Universal substances, says Araman, are but a breath, which means eos de sapientium numero merito esse exaflandos. He merely comments on the saying of Anselm characterized by the same jesting tone, a spiritualium questionum disputation sunt exaflandi pl. 256a, and says that to understand the windy loquacity of Rainbert of Lille one has but to breathe into his hand manuc ori admoda exaflans mon. Germ. Hist. 14, 275. Topic Trithiism of Rosalind Rosalin considered the three divine persons as three independent beings, like three angels, if usage permitted, he added, it might truly be said that there are three gods. Otherwise, he continued, God the Father and God the Holy Ghost would have become incarnate with God the Son. To retain the appearance of dogma he admitted that the three divine persons had but one will and power audio, quad Rosalinus clericus dissid in trace personas esse tres res ab invicem separatas, secut sunt tres angeli, ida tamen ut una sit voluntas et potestas aut patrum et spiritum sanctum esse incarnatum, et trace deos vir posse dici si usus admiterit letter of Anselm to Faulks. This characteristic trithiism, which Anselm and Abelard agreed in refuting even after its author's conversion, seems an indisputable application of Rosalind's anti-realism. He even argues that if the three divine persons form but one God, all three have become incarnate. There are therefore three divine substances, three gods, as there are three angels, because each substance constitutes an individual, which is the fundamental assertion of anti-realism. The ideas of the theologian are closely linked with those of the philosopher. Topic notes topic References topic Citations topic Bibliography This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, De Wolf, Maurice 1912. Rosalind. In Herbermann, Charles. 
Catholic Encyclopedia, 13. New York, Robert Appleton. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., 1911. Rochelinus. Encyclopædia Britannica. 23 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 725. Cunningham, Francis 1836, Text Book of Ecclesiastical History by J.C.I. Gieseler, 3rd ed., Vol. 2, Philadelphia, Carey, Lee, and Blanchard A translation of the original German version. In English, and, in Latin. 